Living in an RV has been a dream for me. I don't even know when it started, but I've always wanted to live minimally. Logan really helped me get that going, get it off the ground. Well, we'd kind of talked a little bit about what she wanted and what was feasible for us. Just the smaller 18-foot trailer seemed like the place to start. You know, start small, we're not sure how big we should go and whatnot, but it seemed like the right place to start for two people. Come on in. One part I really had to have, here's the couch, folds into a futon. It's actually also a bed when you have, the easiest bed when you have people staying over. There's not much space on the camper and you obviously find things that you need room for or just need something extra. So we just found some shelves, put it in Velcro here so that you can take it off. When you do fold your couch into a bed, they actually just can be pulled off. It's really strong Velcro. I knew I couldn't afford anything new. I had hadn't ever saved up for an RV. Whatever I had saved, I was gonna put towards it. So I was looking online on Facebook, on Craigslist. I was looking at local classifieds, anything. And people were also looking for me. I mean, I was very vocal about this is a dream. Someone found this for me on Facebook, on a marketplace on Facebook. And I'm very, I was very particular about the layout. I didn't know too much about an RV. I knew I needed a bed, a separate bed from my eating area and then I knew I'm a nurse and I work nights so I knew if I was gonna have someone with me they need to have their own space to hang out while I'm sleeping in the daytime so it had to have a separate eating area and a separate couch neither of which were my main sleeping area so this is the bedroom area plenty of closet storage you wouldn't think it all fits perfectly in here little closet and then you have some underneath storage I need to sleep when it's light out and that's hard in Alaska when it's light a lot of the time. I actually put up this rod here. i um, got some blackout curtains. It keeps the light out so well. You can just pull it across. There's two panels here. Just pulls across and totally blocks out all light. It's dark back here where you sleep. So it works really well, especially when you have someone else with you that is up during the day. It's a full size bed. I don't know how you would get a full-size mattress in here. I'm sure you can. We went with the foam mattress is a new thing. You can order it through the mail. It comes in a little package and you just put it out and it expands. Not knowing what we're coming across, we also got a topper, foam topper. So we have at least 11 inches of foam here to sleep on. It's so comfortable. This bed is more comfortable than anything I've had in renting apartments and homes. It's a cave. It's really awesome. There's still plenty of light if you want it. I have curtains over each of the windows. This would be a bunk area. We actually did our own setup here. We kind of put wood plank here with some cleats on it just in order to make our storage space for our clothing as large as possible for clothing and so that it won't move when traveling. It's worked out really great so you could have another person even up here and fit at least five people in this camper, no problem. So we just have bins for clothing, time down these ropes and cleats, nothing moves. It's been really awesome. We find it's really easy. All our clothes fit fine that you have plenty of extra space. This is an extra linen closet. We have a friend that stays on our couch. Uh, she kind of comes anywhere we travel and stays here a long time. So she's got a comforter, a blanket, and sheets when she wants it. Uh, you wouldn't even know, but yeah, we can set her up with a full bed. It was pretty much good to go besides some interior uh, modifications. We knew we were going to drive on the Alcan all the way up to Alaska when we bought it. So this RV in particular had been sitting for a while. So we knew we needed to get new tires and maybe pack the wheel bearings and take a look at the hardware underneath just to make sure we can make the drive up because we've only heard, heard horror stories about mm -hmm. driving to Alaska in the, in the springtime with some freak winter storms that could roll through. So we want to make sure we could actually get there first before uh, worrying about most of the other stuff. Mm -hmm. Interior wise, um, as soon as we saw it, it kind of had that old sitting for all winter type smell. I cleaned that thing head to toe. As soon as I cleaned it, I felt like everything was in really good shape the stove oven everything never been used great, yeah. one burner on the stove had been used it had been two previous owners neither of which had used it year-round it was it's not meant for winter but it definitely had hardly been used and a good clean was all it needed i picked it up for a 7500 from the time i looked at it and purchased it purchase price and all the things that went into it to get it on the road to the alcan and across 
about nine thousand dollars. It's been different having a smaller, smaller water tank. I'm used to taking hot showers all the time and taking my time, but. After taking a few showers in here, we realized the water tank's empty and it's only 40 gallons. It's like, wow, we really go through a lot of water without realizing it. So it's been nice to realize how much water we're using and don't wash the dishes with a full, um, full faucet going or, you know, lather up and turn the, turn the water off in the shower and then do our thing and then rinse real quick, you know. So we really have used, realized how much water we've been using. There's so much to learn and to do. I mean, we don't even have you know, we're not even using this space, so hopefully we do have shelving at some point here to put mugs or something up here. But in the meantime, you just always have your stuff so that nothing moves around as you're moving in the trailer. The cutting board's totally cool. It's pretty typical, but when you get a camper, your cutting boards go in the sink, and then you have more counter space to actually do stuff. This uh, storage right here, we've got our paper towel holder and then this uh, bin right here has got most of our cleaning supplies, you know, soap, all that stuff. And then here we've got all these recyclable grocery bags that we use and get groceries and whatnot, and just kind of the usual under sink kitchen stuff. And then all these other drawers, we've just got silverware, basic Tupperware items. Your spice rack is a big one. Comes in a lot of these campers. I'm actually taking up half it, but yeah. Oh, you could have so much here. It's it's clutch in a lot of these old pull behinds. This is about a 2008 Pioneer Spirit, and they all come with this spice rack. You can't get away from it. And yeah. I thought it was cheesy, and actually, it's the best thing. It really helps out. But the thought of living a trailer life was actually to live minimally. We've tried to dry camp quite a bit. We don't, you know, it's nice to pay to use what we have. And so that's dry camping. You know, we realized how much water we do use. Of course, you can have hookups and it feels just like a home. I actually feel like I'm still living quite exotically here. I don't feel like by any means I'm pinching on what I do, especially when you have hookups. And then when you dry camp, it's still muck much more glorious than um, camping from what I'm used to. So it's been pretty perfect. Space-wise, it's plenty big for two people. Pulling the trigger was the hardest part. I am a travel nurse and the income is pretty steady and pretty good. But that being said, we learn to live within our means. What I make can go very fast depending on, you know, I know I make this, so I know I can spend this. It is it is difficult to get a job nursing. Travel nursing, not so much for those that just wanna make more money. It's pretty easy. I did it, I travel nursed for the reason that there were places I wanted to go and wanted to see, and it wasn't about the money. I was just gonna get there. Well, I work in the Merchant Marine, so I work on container ships and oil tankers, and sometimes, ferry boats for three months on, three months off. So I do all my time at work, make my money then for three months. I'm away from home, on the boat for 24 seven in port, out at sea. And then when I come home for three months, I'm with her and before it was in Wyoming skiing every day, all the time. And then now it's traveling up to Alaska, which has been great. So I'm very fortunate and then I can work in a job where I can go for a few months work full time then come back and be able to enjoy time here with her and at the RV and just kind of go wherever we want for um, for wherever we want to go. We just about never use our microwave. You have to be hooked up to electric to use it and we used to eat popcorn all the time. I would make it on the stove a lot. When we're hooked up to electric that's the only thing we really even do in here. You use the stove so much that you get used to it you don't even really use the microwave I'd say too yeah. much. Oven, surprisingly, it was unused. Two previous owners never used it, and we thought, this is awesome. We've used it once to bake cookies. <laughs> Other than that, we've never used it. It's um, just one, one rack, and it's pretty much unused. The fridge has been great. We've got just a little bit bigger than a mini fridge with here with our freezer and our mm -hmm. fridge. Yeah, it's perfect for two people. I mean, just enough space, just mm -hmm. enough for beer, and all the other necessities, milk and coffee and whatnot. I'm a vegetarian and I buy so much produce. A lot of my food is all fresh and it doesn't last long, but you know, I fill a fridge. I thought that would be a huge problem, especially with the fridge this size. Having two people, I don't know, maybe he just doesn't use as much fridge space, but I can stock my fridge with kale, broccoli, Brussels, 
everything you can think of and my stuff actually fits in here. I have less shelf stock than, than I need. He uses yeah. more shelf, I use more fridge and it works out really well. With her being a nurse too, she'll make a big meal on a Sunday or whatever day then have to put in Tupperwares and store it for three or four days to make it for work and whatnot. And it seems to be plenty of room. Yeah. A lot of my stuff is sauteed vegetables. And with these cutting boards, that's where I do a lot of my cutting. The nice thing is it covers over the sink, which is perfect. And then if you need to, you just kind of put the cutting board and use the table as your space. So someone's cooking and you're sitting and cutting here and prepping. We've got four seats right here. I'm sure we could fit more if we wanted to. And this table can fold down into itself underneath these two pads and then we can fit another bed or somebody can else somebody else can sleep right here. It's great for four people to eat as well. And these two blankets we put over our previous upholstery. We're not gonna keep these but this was the design prior. We were not too happy with, with that that flowery design. So we've had these blankets for a while now and have um, found the perfect use for them to, to cover up the, those old, you know, um, old seats. So we chose to put our plates and dishes above the sink and up here we do just our non-perishables. Again, we don't even use half this space up here. It's not organized, but when organized even, you could easily put fine shelving in any real big store and they have shelving here. So you can actually use this whole upper space as well, which we'll get to at some point. So plenty of non-perishables up here as well. This is for some a TV hookup. It has cable and TV. We don't use that. So it just provides us with more non-perishable storage. Uh, that brings us also to underneath these seats for the tables is storage space. So this one here is just random storage for shoes and bags. Underneath this one is actually another drawer for which we've used as um, Canned goods, mm -hmm. peanut butter, honey, stuff that... Yeah. I have a lot of clothes and I try and minimalize, especially thinking I'm living in a trailer. I need food, dishes, and clothes all in one. I don't even need that much space for clothes. We'll show you when we get to it, but the non-perishables, there's plenty of room. And of course, that was one of our... We thought, how are we going to fit all the food we need and clothes? The whole kitchen area is dedicated just to non-perishables produce and dishes. We do have a 40 gallon tank uh, for water and it is under the couch slash futon. You never know when you come into a camp what you're going to come across. Some has more iron or minerals than others and can leave a funky taste. So we're always sure we have at least 10 gallons. We find these to be great. We keep them under the table. So we have two five gallons jugs of water and you can just fill them at a Walmart in Fairbanks. I know they have 24 hour water stations, really cheap. So you always get fresh, good drinking water. And if we're ever stranded anywhere too, you know, the water pump doesn't work or something's messed up, we always have at least that water there just in case anything were to happen. Over here, we have a little sink separate from the bathroom, which I actually find really nice. A lot of campers sometimes have the sink in the shower or just in front of the toilet all in this little bathroom which is doable but having it outside is great when you want to wash your hands, brush your teeth, wash your face and you have two people here. It's been wonderful. You'll find your own ways of storage but it works really well. A little medicine cabinet with a mirror. Below the sink you have some storage. Behind this door is your bathroom. I was a little concerned at first on how it would work with having the toilet in the camper. Toilet, they have special toilet paper, who knew, that can dissolve in the tanks. One ply, we haven't had a bad experience because we've heard all the horror stories. You cannot put normal ply in the tank. It will clog it up, it will sit and you can't do it. And then a full shower, it's been really cool. There's a lot of opportunities on Pinterest or wherever to discover organization techniques for living in the camper. I use a shoe rack for mine. It fits my shampoo, conditioner, everything. You have plenty of space, um, goes in the shower curtain rings, and yeah, no problem. What advice, what would you say to them if you do suggest they do follow a lifestyle like this? What, what would you say to them to help get them over the, the hill? Pull the trigger. Yeah, pull the trigger is the main thing I would say. Once you pull the trigger, then it's real. And then 
that's it. This is it. You have to work on this, and now, you, now you're free to do whatever you want with it. You're not worried about whether you made the right buy or the wrong buy or whatever. You made the buy. That's it. I mean, there you go. This is your this is your dream now. You're living it. And you figure it out as you go. We knew nothing ahead of time, and everyone had their. Um, concerns, their questions, are you prepped for this, are you ready for this? No, I wasn't, but I was going to figure it out as I went. Just putting the money down, getting this trailer was the best thing I could have done. And from here you learn. Um, I'm not one to just kind of wing it and we did. It's, it's been a wonderful, um, I think you'd regret it. You'd forever question what would happen if you had. And once you do, you'll never question anything else. You just know. Well, thanks for coming into our camper and checking it out. Hope you guys liked it. And if you're feeling the need, just pull the trigger. It's so much fun. You'll never regret it. You can always go back to what you do day to day, but I don't think you'll go back if you look this way.